Let's talk about what you can do to jazz up your resume so you can get the cybersecurity job making the big bucks. What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the things you can do to jazz up your resume so you can go out there and land a cybersecurity job making the big bucks. But before we get into all that, make sure you hit the like button, share button, subscribe to this channel, and also go sign up for a Tech G membership where I will be teaching you stuff to help you enhance your IT and cybersecurity skills. So, with that being said, let's check out this article. Article says, there there is a cybersecurity talent gap across the U.S. Here's what you can do to put on your resume to land a high paying job in the industry. So you guys know if you've been sub to my channel for a while, I've been talking about this talent gap out there. There is this dire need to hire cybersecurity professionals, but unfortunately, the industry simply just does not have the numbers to meet the job requirements. But this article is supposedly going to teach us a couple things to help those of you out there who may have the skills or you're currently developing the skills to see what you might be able to do to land a high paying job paying the big bucks. Since there are currently 714,548 open cybersecurity roles across the U.S., according to data collected by the tracking site CyberSeek, says there certainly is a talent gap in the United States, said this guy who's a senior manager of talent acquisition at computer security firm Mandiant. He says there is by no means enough talent to fulfill the roles that are out there. Says this talent squeeze is especially affecting the supply supply of information security analysts, which is cybersecurity's largest job. It says from May 2021 to April 2022, there was an annual talent gap of 39,000 information security analysts, according to CyberSeek's data. These analysts can earn a base salary of $82,358 in the U.S., according to Payscale, but analysts at some top firms can make more than double this figure. Two of the highest paid analysts at EY made more than $170,000, according to publicly disclosed foreign labor data. So I want to talk about this real quick, because when you guys get off into these YouTube streets and you start cruising around looking for videos, talking about what section in IT pays the most money, oftentimes you're going to hear a bunch of people who like to push data, cloud, data science, or something like that. And you got a lot of people that will tend to overlook look cybersecurity for whatever reason I've yet to understand. But you can't just necessarily go off of what random people say on the YouTubes, especially if these people don't have a background or a proven background of, uh, you know, helping you get started in IT like your boy Tech G does. But the point is you can make a lot of money in cybersecurity. This is why I encourage you all to learn this stuff. I post these classes on my channel, IT Fundamentals, A+, Net+, and Security+, Plus, because these are the base layer classes that can direct directly funnel you into a cybersecurity role where you can end up getting a base salary of like $82,000 and on the high end as high as 170 or maybe even more. So I'm kind of glad this article said this because I've been saying this for the longest and I've had some back and forth with other YouTubers over the years, you know, on various panels and they'll be trying to downplay cybersecurity. I'm like, you can make a lot of money in cybersecurity as well. So, but the reason why I push cybersecurity is because it's my personal belief that this is the easiest path to getting into IT. Article says cyber jobs can range across at least seven categories spanning 52 different roles. So you got about 52 different types of cybersecurity jobs that are out there. I did a video outlining at least 17 of them. I didn't even realize there were 52, but apparently there are 52 different types of cybersecurity jobs out there. So sky's the limit. Article says roles such as ethical hacker, information security engineer and network security architect all reported average base salaries above the six figure mark in 2019. It says landing one of these high paying tech roles can be difficult for candidates who are trying to cast a wide net to get past the screening stage. Cybersecurity experts and recruiters recommend highlighting unusual experiences and interpersonal
personal skills when tailoring resumes to the industry. These resumes are important, ladies and gentlemen. You have to get these things down, packed, and tailored specifically for a job. You cannot just be going out there creating a one-size-fits-all resume, then throwing it out there, hoping something sticks. You got to tailor that thing down to meet the needs of that specific job that you are applying for. It says, making an impression. So when constructing a resume, most candidates expect a human to be looking at it, but an increasing number of candidates are being screened by artificial intelligence. Now, if you guys have been subscribed to the Tech G channel for some time now, I actually did a video on this about a year and a half ago telling you guys that you guys drop these resumes off onto these sites. You go on Indeed, Monster, Yahoo Jobs, or whatever job posting website is out there. Those resumes are being scanned by artificial intelligence. And when they're getting scanned, they are looking for keywords on your resume. And if you don't have any keywords or enough keywords that the AI will pick up on, they will pretty much throw your resume in the trash and your resume won't even make it to the desk of a human being to be reviewed by. So if you want to learn how to get your resume past our artificial intelligence, I suggest you go to my playlist and you will see a playlist I put together called Quick Classes or something like that. And in that playlist, I have a video talking about how you can up the odds of you getting your resume past the artificial intelligence. Go watch that video. It says a lot of times a machine is taking the first glance at a resume. Most large companies have some type of technology to look at it. Content and format are both important to get through the first stage. Bortle may recommend it making a resume easy to read with the information hitting the major buzz points. Once you get past the machine, recruiters are looking at the resume within 20 seconds. So what that means is you got your resume ready to go. You uploaded it. It has all the relevant keywords and terms on there. And once again, go watch that video that I made. I explain exactly how you can get your resume to have all the keywords on it. It's a process that most of y'all probably never even thought about, and it can drastically up the odds of your resume making it past this AI artificial intelligence machine. But once your resume makes it past the AI and it gets into the hands of a human being, you got to understand these people that are looking at your resumes, they probably have a stack of resumes, anywhere between 50 to 100 or maybe 200, depending upon what the job is that is being offered. And let's just put yourself in their position. Are you honestly going to sit there and go through every single resume to try to find perfect candidate? Well, most people who are reviewing resumes do. They will look at the first page and the first one or two lines. And if they don't see certain things within the first one or two lines or whatever the case may be, they will throw your resume in the trash. So you have to get that resume together to where when somebody looks at it, the first couple lines highlights all the important stuff that is directly relevant to that job so they can take your resume and put it in the special pile over here for further review. That's what you guys need to understand. Article says, Borderlay recommending putting your most significant accomplishment at the top of the resume. It says, capture my attention with something you unique that other people have not done. If you don't, nothing else on there is going to matter. See, I just told you guys this. You have to have the most important stuff at the top of the resume ready to go because if I'm looking at a stack of resumes, I'm not about to read through one or two pages of your resume to see if you qualify. I need to see in the first paragraph at the very top all the important stuff or else I'm kicking your resume to the side because I got about 50 to 100 other resumes I got to go through. That's just how this works, ladies and gentlemen. Casey Ellis, founder of a crowdsourced security platform, Bug Crowd, suggested candidates use a start of a resume to get across their overall approach to work, not just the very specific technical cybersecurity things that they've done. So you want to highlight practical experience. So the biggest thing within cybersecurity a lot of times is the hands-on experience. Hands-on experience. This is why I get on these videos and every single video I tell you guys go sign up for a Tech G membership because in those memberships, I'm going to be teaching you labs and these labs can qualify as quote-unquote hands-on experience that you can add to your resume to hopefully up the odds of you getting hired in these positions. So go sign up for a Tech G membership. Says he added that he often looks for candidates who are creative with their technical knowledge. 
Because a lot of times you have to be creative or even design your own tool to be effective because the threats aren't going to fall in a particular bucket. He says the attackers know what the security tools are as well. And that is true. I told you guys in previous videos, hackers are always like one step ahead of the cybersecurity people. They know all the stuff that you're learning and they're just using it against you. Article says this experience doesn't have to be in a full time job or internship, though. Bortle may said that a lot of time is what candidates have done outside of the classroom that's important he said candidates tend to leave out things like having a home lab working on independent projects competing in competitions and playing around with tools to build infrastructure so a lot of people always say well how can i get experience if i don't work in cybersecurity?" so once again, for those of you all who have been subbed to my channel for a hot little minute, I've given you guys tips and ideas on what you can do to build up experience if you're not working in a cybersecurity or even an IT role per se. Like you can go down to your local church and start setting up the IT network for your local church, your local community group. You could be the IT guy for your family where you're going over there fixing their internet connections and sprucing things up with their IoT in their house, for home automation, like all of this stuff can be listed on your resume as experience, even if you are just getting started in IT and have never worked in a IT role in a professional capacity. You can go online. There are all type of competitions on there. You can sign up for Tech G memberships and do these labs. And guess what? These labs that I'm going to be doing with y'all, those could fall up under this right here, building infrastructure, because that's some of the stuff I'm going to be showing you guys how to do in these Tech G memberships. So there are all types of ways to gain experience, even if it's not experience in the traditional professional role of actually holding the job. There are things that you can do to add to that resume to hopefully make you stand out. Article says, Ellis also highlights the importance of being involved in projects. I see organizations looking for contributions to open source projects. People can't participate in those even if they've never worked in the space before. So for example, they will look at GitHub repositories. In terms of softer skills, Borderlay said just mentioning running a club or being in charge of a project Project can show these off. Another expert, Dylan Buckley, who co-founded the job site Directly Apply, said cybersecurity is much about human interaction as it is about technical capability. Hackers often try to exploit human users to breach systems rather than overcome a company's security, he said, making interpersonal skills vital to stopping these attacks. And this whole point about human interaction is probably one of the most important things that you guys need to understand. When you guys go out there, get your certs, and you go get a job, you're going to discover that a lot of people in tech are like introverted type of people for the most part. They just want to be locked up in the broom closet, click clacking on the computer, and they don't want to really be bothered by anybody. That's like ideal for almost any tech type of person. But the reality is you're going to have to go out there and interact and talk with people. And you can't just go out there interacting and talking with them in a techie geeky kind of way. But you're going to have to be able to translate this techie geeky lingo into layman's terms for the average person out there. And basically you're just going to have to get comfortable with the idea of talking to people. And then also within talking to people, you're going to have to be on your P's and Q's and be on the lookout for people who might be trying to play you in terms of trying to socially engineer you to get access to the systems and networks instead of them trying to hack into the stuff directly. They'll rather just get you to quote unquote hack into it for them. So these are some of the things that you're going to have to learn and understand. And like I say, I'm saying this because I see a lot of people that are shy, introverted. Like I've seen this a lot in my career. And yes, they're really good on the technical side, but if you really want to maximize your skills and potential earning income in tech, you got to be good at the technical stuff and the soft skills stuff. If you figure out how to merge those two together, you can really go places in tech, no matter what area of IT you're doing. So just keep that in mind. All right, folks. So there you have it. Now you have the information that you need so that you can go out there and jazz up your resume so you can up the odds of you finding a job in IT and cybersecurity. Security. And just to reiterate a couple things with this resume, you need to go watch my video. If you haven't seen it, go click on the playlist and click on the playlist that says quick classes. Matter of fact, I might post that video in the description for those of y'all who are too lazy to click on the playlist. But in that video, I specifically show you a technique that you can use to drastically up your odds of getting your resume past the artificial intelligence so that your resume can hopefully land on the desk 
desk of a human being who will read your resume. And then once your resume hits the desk of a human being that is actually going to read it, you need to go through and make sure that within the first couple paragraphs at the very top of the resume, you have all the important nitty gritty stuff ready to go, locked and loaded that are directly related to that job that you are applying for. Because if you don't, that person looking at your resume is going to ball it up and throw it in the trash. So hopefully you learned something from this. And if you did, I need you to hit that like button, share button, drop a comment and subscribe to this channel. And once again, go sign up for a Tech G membership so you can start learning these labs so you can add that to your resume saying you have quote unquote hands on experience with dealing with network stuff pertaining to IT and cybersecurity because that is what I'm going to be showing you guys over there. And with that being said, I will highlight you all on the next video. So peace.